that will offer a, quite a lot of threat uh, going forward. Aubameyang, a bit like Mane, has hit the ground running and looks a real uh, handful. Um, Tobias, I think, is a, a, a good recruit for them. But all of their talent, for me, looks that way and all of their problems are behind. Could you make the argument that they've had up there with the best windows from Premier League teams? Interesting point. Um, uh, I did a piece with Robbie Fowler um, about who his signings of the window were, and he said, as, as he said, I accept people will criticise me for this, but David Luiz was one of the signings of the window because eight million pounds, nothing for a defender. He's played in World Cups. He's played. He's won titles. He's won two titles. He's won titles in France as well. Um, he's also really quite a cynical defender. I know people question his defending, but he's, he's that kind of nasty guy who will do a bit of cheating, a bit of, bit of cynical time wasting, all of that stuff. He's been around a long time. He knows, he knows, he actually does know how to defend, but he knows how to defend in that cynical way, which maybe Arsenal lack a little. Arsenal lacked in the past that sort of, the defence which was kind of a bit ugly and a little bit, little bit sort of not really prepared to do that. I'm hesitating to say cheating because it's not cheating, is it? But it's kind of, it's kind of that grey area or on the borderline of that where you, the defenders, will do what it takes to win. And uh, Luis definitely has that. I'm mean, still, it's still not necessarily the greatest defender, but he's got the experience and he'll bring that to their backline. So I think they'll be better defensively this season than perhaps people are thinking, but certainly than they have been in the past. Um, my question is over players like Pepe, who for me. And obviously, merely my opinion. But looking, I look closer at his stats last season and his contribution. He's great going forward. He's an individual. I'm not sure he fits into a team pattern. And I don't think that his numbers are, are right for a £72 million player. Time will tell. But I, I think that's the question mark. I think Luis good signing and Pepe not convinced about. Let's start with David Luiz then. And you look back to the, the previous two seasons, the games between Liverpool and Arsenal at Anfield. One finishes 4 0, the other one last season finishes 5 1. Does that, does that sort of result become completely eradicated by the presence of David Luiz or not? No. Um, I think the signs that Arsenal have done this summer will push them closer to where they want to be, but not absolutely where they want to be. David Luiz, consistently over his career in England anyway, he, I think he's a better player than people think he is, but he does make some terrible mistakes. Although you won't see bad periods of form from him, he'll make a bad mistake, and then you know you'll see a good period of form from him. He's not a, he's not a form player, shall we say? He's just a player who occasionally his concentration levels will drop and something ridiculous will happen, and everybody will be talking about it. But then he'll get back on the the road pretty quickly. So I think he's a much better player than people think he is. Um, and I, I agree with Dave. I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a better sign than maybe people think. But it's whether the, he's going to take them to the point where they really want to be, which is you know back in the Champions League and and um, and being in that competition regularly because they've been out of it for such a long time now. People forget that once you once you're out of it, as Liverpool know, it's very difficult to get back in. Um, I think Kieran Tierney's a, a good signing, but he's obviously not uh, he's not fit yet. Mm. He'll be a, he'll be a, an improvement on Nacho Monreal, who's sort of a player that Liverpool have really got at over the last couple of years whenever they've played at Anfield. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think as, as Matt and both Dave, Matt and Dave both said, there's still a team that you can see getting a few paces from time to time. But I think they will be better this season with more options. I'm not sure whether they needed to sign that player for £72 million. You know, they're pretty strong going forward. They've got a lot of young players who, who you know, Reese Nelson, who I believe is a, a very good player. Um, and he, he started the season, and Willock, who started the season well. So, you know, if these have gone out, it's whether it, it comes down to availability, doesn't it? If these have gone out and signed a player who, who they believe is, is going to transform them defensively, I still think the goalkeeper as well is, is for me, just not quite on the physical capacity that is needed to to play in, in Premier League football and be a huge success. Whether the, the young French lads who, who they signed from Saint-Étienne will, will be that player that they expect over the next couple of years, I don't know, but obviously he's one, one for the future, I think. So, so yeah, I mean, I just think Liverpool ultimately with the forward line that they've got. Um, they can give any team problems, but particularly a team which is still in a bit of transition defensively, um, not going to necessarily know where they all are at times. I remember last season at Anfield, Nathan Miles was bombing up down the wing, and then suddenly there's big gaps, and then Liverpool are three one ahead, and within you know within a couple of minutes really. So um, so yeah, I, I, 
I think there'll be a better performance from Arsenal, but I still see Liverpool winning that game. That is the question, that, though, Matt, in terms of, of signings and, and how you do your recruitment, and particularly if you're working with a limited budget, which we were told all the way through the summer that Arsenal were. Yeah. Why do you first go and get yourself the attacking wide player who's worth £72 million and end up signing a centre-half good or not for eight million when you could potentially go and get a much better centre half for sixty million. Yeah. Because that's your biggest area of concern. Well and added to that, why spend twenty plus million on a centre half that you're gonna send back for a mm. season on loan? That may make sense, but it doesn't make sense in the circumstances that Arsenal found themselves. I can only answer that by saying I think they're a club that is a kit of parts behind the scenes. We don't know quite how much the owner or owner's son are directly involved. It's their money, so we presume to some extent they've recruited extensively in terms of uh, the management and recruitment teams but they're all quite new um, so who's making what decisions it looks to me a bit like uh, a club that has a certain stature and pedigree uh, but is fishing in a slightly different pond than the one they used to um, and thus are trying to cast around to find in Pepe maybe what they think is the best marquee signing they could get because the clubs above Arsenal in the packing order probably had said no um, and then in the case of Louise, it was what they had left, that they, and that may end up, as the boys say, to be a decent signing. I'm not convinced he solves their problems at the back, personally, uh, because he is what he is. Um, I think Tierney is a good point from Si. I think he will definitely improve them in time. Um, but I think Arsenal are still what they were, fundamentally, which is a team that will score goals and concede. And they will score goals given that they've got Lacazette and Aubameyang as well as, as Nicola Pepe. Would you be concerned at all with the amount of chances that Liverpool have conceded in the early part of this season and the high line that they've played coming up against an attack so full of pace on Saturday? Yeah, absolutely you would. Um, Arsenal are one of the most dangerous attacking sides in, in the Premier League, there's no doubt. So even if Liverpool were, were playing at their highest level defensively, you would still be concerned. So. It, it will be. What I would say is Liverpool have had a week to prepare for this game now, which, which, given their scheduling over the last few weeks, is is it almost a luxury. And and you will know that Klopp is very very good, as we've seen over the past season. At, when he when he gets the time to prepare for games, Liverpool rarely get it wrong. You look back every time they've had a week, they've always shown tactically they know exactly where they are and and they do well. I, d I wouldn't see that changing either, so I can see Liverpool coming out and playing defensively the right way to, to counteract um, Arsenal and having a plan to be able to exploit. Um, what, it, what, it, what will be for them is, a, is it will be a new defence, you know, still getting used to each other. They'll have players, the, the, the guy on loan from Real Madrid, everybody said how great he was and he did, he played very well different game completely when you're playing against Liverpool and it's the high end of the Premier League with the pace of that. He won't be used to that, believe me. So it, Liverpool will come out and play a game which they believe will, will put Arsenal under pressure, but Arsenal will clearly have that threat, no doubt. And it's interesting actually talking about their defence to, to hear what Socrates said after they beat Burnley and he said maybe it is more easy to defend against Liverpool because you don't have to fight but they also play a lot of football. I think it's, it's an interesting way of looking at it that it might be easier than playing against Burnley but is that, has that been Arsenal's problem in those big away games against the top six is that they, they see themselves or there is, there is a, an aura of that they can still go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of a Liverpool or Manchester City on their home ground and, and actually they can't, they're not good enough to. Yeah, I mean, it, it's been thrown at Arsenal for a, a long time now, you know, as long as a decade, really. The, 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 the sort of the mental capacity, is, is it's a different requirement going away from home. It shows it, no great signs of change. It hasn't it? really, not yet. I mean, it's only early on in the season, obviously, and they have, they've, they've come through, I mean, Newcastle away first game of the season. Obviously, it was well documented, all the problems that are there, but it's still, nevertheless, not an easy place to go and win on the opening day of the season. So that was a good victory, obviously kept a clean sheet. And then Burnley, you know, off the back of a very good home win against Southampton and their form the second half of last season was very good, Burnley. So I can understand why people say, well, quite straightforward victories, but, you know, the, the good, good wins for Arsenal. Coming to Anfield, I just think that, you know, the, the, at this moment in time, there's such a positive atmosphere inside Anfield. It's been the, the best atmosphere inside Anfield 
um, over the last sort of six to 12 months of any period that I can remember in, in, in sort of living memory, really. Even the Norwich game, you know, it was bouncing on the opening day of the season, yeah. Friday night, I think Saturday night, 5.30 kick-off, everybody's going to be really into it. It's going to be a hostile atmosphere. It was, it was interesting what Dave said there about uh, Ceballos because I remember last season, Lucas Torreira was getting all, you know, commended for all his aggressive performances comes to Anfield and, and gets bullies out the game and he, he hasn't really played that much since, mm -hmm. since that day. He's, so it, it can be a place where you know can really form impressions on on uh, the managers and, 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 and the players around you and, and have, have a lasting impact on on you know the way things are in the future. So yeah I, I think that they, they do need a big performance away from home because it, it, it hasn't it hasn't happened for such a long time but as I said I'm just not sure whether that they're capable of that at this stage of the season against a Liverpool team which is so good going forward. All right, let's just rattle through some predictions then, Simon. 3-1, uh, Liverpool. Matt? 2-0. Uh, oh, in, in keeping with recent history, 5-1. Five, 5-1, one. Five, <laughs> one. that's the sort of prediction we really welcome <laughs> like on this it. show. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. Matt, Dave, you can go and settle your differences on VAR <laughs> or whichever <laughs> method you choose to. A reminder, if you ever miss Press Box, you can always catch up on LFC TV Go. We are back. At